The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. This week on the Popon Film, we are continuing our month-long celebration of a holiday that means an awful lot to this here podcast. I am, of course, talking about the nationwide holiday known as Bunnoween. <laughs> hey, that top-headed podcaster, Bunny Williams, was born every year on Bunnoween. Little kids all across America dress up as Bunny Williams and goes door to door saying church organist and yes. the people give the little kids tiny joints yes mm-hmm. and that's bono ween i always had i always had my my crappy parents buy me the cheap supermarket bunny williams outfit you know the yeah. brittle plastic mask with that the you elastic can't see or that breathe would out. always break yeah and then the easily breakable string holding it onto your head yeah you know, there's also apparently another holiday called Halloween where people do something. I don't know. I don't care. So in celebration of Bunnoween, uh, we have a whole month of, uh, of bizarre spooky movies uh, picked out by the man of the month, Bunny Williams. Now, uh, for this episode, we were going to watch an exciting action movie about two brothers. It was called Alien invasion tomato monster mexican armada brothers who are just regular brothers running in a van from an asteroid and all sorts of other things in the movie but <laughs> Jeannie, i don't like it thanks genie you ruined the podcast <laughs> so now we have to watch this bizarre art house experimental black and white silent piece of crap yes this week we are trying and no doubt failing to discuss the 1990 experimental quote-unquote art film, Begotten! Yes. Pretentious piece of shit. I'm I'm glad we watched it. I'm glad glad we actually covered this movie. Uh, Just to kind of be like, our podcast ain't afraid to go there. You know? Yeah. That kind of a thing. Yeah, we got it over. But yeah. good God, if if there is ever a movie that's a case for people just don't want to admit that it's shit. Oh yeah. Oh, it yeah. is this movie. I mean, I, I watched exactly. it I watched it twice and then I started looking up shit to find out yeah. it, what exactly was so great here. Yeah. And everybody was sucking this movie's cock. Like, oh, hell yeah. Hard. It's just like a nonsensical, bizarre, like, black and white experimental gore film done on the cheap over a series of three years. But then you go online and it's like, oh, this, this deep, important allegory of the book of Genesis. And it's like, oh, fuck all of that. This character who portrays the part of God represents mankind's... Oh, shut the hell up. Yeah. (laughs) You know... And it's black and white to cover up the fact that the gore really sucks. Yep. You know, it's like... it's Because everything in this movie, because of how it was shot, and okay, I get that, that you're trying to use an artistic expression there to cover up everything that you can't do, you know? Um, yeah. Cause this still had to run them, you know, back then before like any kind of video recorders or things like that, you know, film was fucking expensive. So he could have easily have run one or $2,000 just for the film alone, you know? Yeah. So he probably yeah. didn't have very good special effects for the gore or anything like that. And, you know, they went for the chocolate syrup blood or whatever, and it's okay because black and white film is cheaper. And then we'll just fuck it up from, from there so that it looks like art. And it doesn't look just cheap. Yeah. I was I not. Don't know. I don't know. Maybe because I'm more jaded. I don't know. 
I, I was not disturbed by this at all. Yeah. Stop pushing her. Eleanor, leave Maxwell alone, okay? It's late. He's getting tired. Leave Maxwell alone. Stop antagonizing your brother. You're purposely going out of your way to piss him off. Be nice. Here, play with this. It's one of those things on the back of a cell phone. I don't know what why people need them. So this is a difficult film to discuss, primarily because it's not actually a film. It's a bizarre, gory, black-and-white, silent, experimental horror film reimagining the Book of Genesis via Eli Roth. It's not an actual yeah. film. No. So how do you discuss a film that's not actually a film? Well, I thought, and I thought, I, I'd done be thinking, and then here's the answer. We just don't. Let's <laughs> just talk about Baby Driver again. God damn, I love Baby Driver. <laughs> So much. It's such a good film. And then I, I movie ninja Natasha with it. I said, watch the beginning because the beginning's really good. And she watched the beginning. And then I said, okay, you're done with the beginning. Now, seriously, just watch the opening credits because the opening credits are even more amazing than the beginning because it's got this like this this whole thing is just one shot and it's incredible you gotta watch this and then she was blown away by that and then of course at that point she had to watch the entire movie the All... movie ninja me yeah, I just... yeah. and now it's really up there taking uh, it might it might end up being my favorite movie yep like yeah. Yeah. it is quickly shot up the charts it is fan fucking fantastic and yeah. just because I'm a depressing bitch I explained to Steve how I had my headphones in while slowly watching my mother, no, watching my mother slowly die, yeah. uh, and it was like uh, it was like Baby Driver, but with death. Yeah, that's yeah. what you were listening to. No, no, I wasn't listening to Baby Driver, but oh. I had my phone. I have a, I have like six hundred songs on my phone, and so I put my headphones in so I could not listen to, you know, the beeping and yeah. the <laughs> of the uh, ventilator yeah. machine. Um. So I had a soundtrack to my mother's slow, slow death, and nice. it was a baby driver. It was great. Nice. Wow, six hundred songs. Oh. I need more. Fuck off. Okay, I can uh, give you the baby driver soundtrack. I just want to watch. I want to put that movie on my phone so I can watch it anytime because it's damn good. I yeah. love that movie. I I I movie ninja to Emerald and, and then fell Emerald's, with it. Emerald's bitch ass just got up and walked away. Emerald, come here! I, we are discussing I need, this. Yeah. I need to know. Bella loved it. Bella was Emerald blown thought. away by it because I'm mad. I I was like, well, and Emerald just got up and walked away. Like, what the fuck is that shit? Come here. I need your opinion. How did you like the movie Baby Driver? I loved it. We then were why just, the fuck did you walk away? Yeah, once me? once the credits started, you immediately just stood up and stormed out of the living room. Everybody was being so room. fucking loud. I hated it. Oh my god, I couldn't even listen to half the movie. I wasn't even there. For no, it. no, Maxwell and Jaden were there. That's probably why. No, they, were just, they weren't. Yeah, it was yesterday. Yeah, it wasn't was. It? Yeah, it was yesterday. No, yesterday we were at Nana's. It was the day before. Oh, uh, it was the day before. Was Jaden there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because that's when I was going to make all the funeral arrangements. Yeah. Everybody was so and then and then Eleanor's just running around I screaming the whole time. It was great. Genius. Well, well I was not there, there and, and, and so when like the it ended, done, and nobody, still nobody shut up, and, and I so told her, I was like, so like, what did you no. think? And you got up and walked away, and I was like, well, fuck her. This is Mike Myers. Shut up. Love that. Love that so much. Ten out of ten. Love that movie. See? There you go. Like, yeah. It's the same person. Yeah. yeah. You can tell. You can tell in some yeah. shots. It's just so beautiful. There are some scenes at the end where where they're in the the parking garage and they're yeah. trying to kill each other. There are certain like like lens flares and blue lights that they use that just look straight out of Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. 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 Rewatching it. Rewatching it. There are certain scenes where like there's a close up of baby yeah. as he's driving and. and <laughs> He loves that blue. movie too. Ten out of ten. Oh, Ethan loves it. Okay. Ethan loves it. E Ethan has made his way on the podcast. Before. I mean, it's totally a good fucking right movie. Get that out of your mouth. It's yeah, cruel, but it's a very good movie. So, okay, Begotten is a 1990 gory Bible allegory written and directed by E. Elias Merhigi. Mer Merhige. 
which yeah. is the single most pretentious director's name I've ever heard. Dude's not French or Dutch or something. Motherfucker's <laughs> Brooklyn for shit's sake. And his name is E. Elias Mershinge. Yeah. How much you want to bet that guy's real name is like John Smith or Jeff Schwartz or something, basically? <laughs> Jeff Schwartz. I would not be surprised. Oh, oh, my name is E. Elias Mershinge. That's my name. So the story is interesting. He's only made three movies, three full-length movies. Number one, Begotten, this week's film, which is barely a film. Then, based on the the slow but steady cult that built around Begotten, he got his big break with the 2000 big-budget Hollywood horror movie within a movie, Shadow of the Vampire, which is pretty, really pretty good. Nice, yeah. Uh, John Malkovich, Willem Dafoe, uh, side note, fuck his first name. <laughs> Always pisses me off. Yeah. William Dafoe. Oh, no, you're Willem. Mm. By a vowel. <laughs> Willem Dafoe, Maxwell just farted in the podcast. If you could not fart during the podcast, Maxwell, I'd appreciate that. Everyone's going to assume it's me. So don't fart anymore, okay? You're not allowed to fart during the podcast. Eddie Izzard and Udo Kier. Udo Kier. It's a really good film it, it about is. the making of Naruto, and and it's creepy. It cost eight million dollars and it made a, over eleven million. That's not a huge hit, but it did good. He followed that up four years later with the bizarre two thousand and four New Age crime thriller Suspect Zero. Okay. And it's about a serial killer who hunts serial killers using remote viewing. Oh, God. All right. It's bizarre. It, it was high profile at the time because it was one of the first films that was made by Tom Cruise's own production studio. Oh. And it featured ben, Sir Ben Kingsley and all these other famous people. And Carrie Ann Moss. Wow, everything she's done has been a big hit. <laughs> Can't believe a film with Carrie Ann Moss could fail. <laughs> the film, the film cost over twenty-seven million to make, and it made eleven million. Yeah, it pretty much ended his movie career, and and uh, yeah, so that's basically it. Have fun doing just music videos, Jeff Schwartz. <laughs> By the way, a little uh, side note concerning remote viewing. Yeah. Um. We had an author come into the store in uh, Sacramento, and he we, and the 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 my community relations person said, "Yeah, this is this is a, a a signing that corporate sent to us. I'm not sure what the deal is. He's some sort of retired army general, and uh, he, he's doing this thing about remote viewing, and okay. he." His bio says that uh, he 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 was part of a government organization, and and it said that George Clooney played him in a movie, but I don't believe that. The guy seems like a bit of a nutbag, and his book is about I don't know traveling to places with your mind. It's really weird. I'm not excited about it. So then I'm like, wait a second. That all sounds pretty bizarre. And just the simple fact that what George Clooney played you in a movie? Okay, I need to find out who this guy is. He was the real life guy. From the true story that became the film The Men Who Stare at Goats. The Men Who Stare at Goats. I had seen it or had seen part of it. I, I, I have no remembrance of this movie except that I saw it. It's a true story. It stars Ian McGregor and George Clooney. And it, it's a true story about like Project... Project, uh, Project Stargate, I think is what it's called. In the movie, the way it goes is, um, uh, sir, remember when we leaked the fake story to the press that we were engaging in new age sci-fi techniques to read the enemy's mind in combat? Okay. Well... The Russians heard that fake story and think it's real, so now they're spending millions of dollars trying to learn how to engage in sci-fi in a in a, a in new age combat techniques using mind reading. So now we have to actually do that. <laughs> 
So yeah, the government had this like top secret program that. Oh used no, I'm familiar with the program. To and, yeah, to try and yeah. So the whole film revolves around this guy who led the project, and that's George Clooney. And the real life guy came and and he had a book signing and i went back to them my community relations person i'm like this is a big deal the men who stare at goats that was a big film this is a big deal and this is a true story and i just saw the film and it was amazing and we have the book here at work and george Clooney's on the cover and this is that guy yeah and it was kind of sad because he... he had this book about how it see now i'm really curious the, the guy... though did he say it was all fake no he said it was all real the actual it, guy? It was, yeah, he, he said that it was all real, but it was shut down by the government because the government thought it was a joke. Right. But all the people in the organization took it very seriously, and it, he had a book about remote viewing, about how you could travel places out of your body using right. just your mind and your spirit. And so I read The Men Who Stare at Goats, and I watched the movie The Men Who Stare at Goats, and I talked to this guy at length, and I bought his book, and I'm like, I'm going to try this. Okay. If remote viewing is real, God damn it, I'm going to sit down on this couch and relax and remote view my ass to Disneyland. <laughs> and let me tell you, I could get on the freeway. Yeah. And I could start traveling there. Uh -huh. I never got there. I never got there, though. I feel that if I tried harder and spent more time focusing on my re remote viewing techniques that I could definitely get there. I just never did. Yeah. Well, the government, the government cut them because they weren't making any progress. They weren't finding anything. Yeah. yeah. It's a really, it's a really cute film. The one thing that I like about the film, about the movie, the men who stare at goats is that literally the government was spending millions of dollars to try and use new agey uh, techniques to try and build an army of basically Jedi's. Yeah. That was the term that they used. That that we need Jedi's. We need Jedi's that can move things with their with our minds and have powers. And so it's kind of cool that the reporter who is reporting on all this is Ewan McGregor. <laughs> That's the thing that got me interested in the film. Like, holy crap, that's Ewan McGregor. And he's in this movie playing a real-life guy learning about a secret government organization trying to create Jedis. Yes. Like, holy crap, I can see why you wanted to be in this film. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm pretty good at remote viewing, there, but I can't get anywhere. It's kind of like how I can fly in dreams, but my legs dangle. Yes. Yeah, like I can't get my legs up when I fly. Anyway, Maxwell just fell asleep in, on me here. So so this is a hard film to watch and or comprehend. Um, Begotten, not The Men Who Stare at Goats. That's yes. fucking hilarious. I think it might still be on Netflix. Wikipedia and various websites clued me into the biblical allegories behind the film, but without someone to explicitly tell you, hey, this character is God, this character is Mother Nature, yeah. without a guide... To explain this all, this is just a bad, incomprehensible wannabe snuff film with a bad budget. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and every time I was seeing the cultists on the screen, the only thing that was going through my head was, Dennis, there's some lovely filth down here. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Which, like, yeah. really took me out of the film. Because <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly but, hey. what they fucking looked like. Yeah. But hey, 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 uh, this isn't all doom and gloom, all right? Yeah. This isn't all dark and glum sadness. Let's turn that frown upside down, Molly Brown, with some totally 100% true fake facts that I have learned about uh -huh. this week's film, Be Gotten. I've got a list. Okay, good. About some fun, lighthearted, totally true fake facts about this week's film, Be Gotten. So the opening scene where God disembowels himself, uh -huh. um, you know who was playing God at the time? Um, Gilbert Godfrey? That's exactly what I have written down. <laughs> that is exactly what I have written down. Gilbert Godfrey. He had dialogue, too. 
am now disemboweling myself. Yeah. You can see as I lose my bowels. That's exactly what I wrote down right there. You and I have a psychic bond. I may have uh-huh. remote viewed you the answer. You, you may have. I may have. Because uh-huh. that's how powerful I am. The scene where Mother Nature emerges from God's bloody corpse and then sits on God's dead but still erect penis until the corpse of God ejaculates into Mother Nature, causing her to give birth to the son of the earth. Interesting fact, that was originally a deleted scene in the director's cut of the Oogie Loves and the Big Balloon Adventure. <laughs> yes. The scene, the, the, the scene was originally... Goofy, Toofy, pull up your pants so that you don't inseminate Mother Earth, causing her to give birth to the son of Earth. That was originally the line. All the kids had to say it in the theater. They thought it was a bit too long, and so they cut the scene. But see, now that he lifted from uh, Osiris and Isis. That's a part of of their story. Oh, yeah? Osiris was dead. Yeah, so he's just dealing shit everywhere. And and Isis mounted up on him and and got pregnant with Horus, yeah. I think. I forget. Yeah. So it's like, okay. Um, so you lifting that from there. Speaking of lifting things, Bella and I just watched a Netflix original movie, starring I don't remember his name, but he plays Ben Wyatt in Parks and Rec. Yeah, it's a movie called Little Evil. Yeah. And it's it's a it's a horror film that's essentially just a comedy version of The Omen. Yeah, I've seen but clips or something. It ex- looks ex- except, yeah, it, it it it's bad. the The only redeeming quality is that they literally steal from everything. So I did like this movie is bad. This movie is really bad. Oh my God. Those two twins that are really creepy. Okay. Bella, that's from the shining. I had fun watching this crap happy movie because they steal from so much. Yeah. Like the stepdad goes to check on his stepson and the stepson is just creepily staring into static on a TV. And I'm like, yeah. okay, number one, this film was, this movie was filmed in 2016. Static doesn't exist anymore. Mm hmm. So there's no way this could happen. Number two, this is Poltergeist. Yeah. Like, like they steal from so much that I had so much fun. It's like, okay, that person that just got impaled. Okay. There's this film called the Omen. Let me explain to you, Damien. And like, it, they like literally any major horror film, they stole something from. Yes. So nice. it was fun to point out all the things that they stole from. Other than that, it really isn't a good film. It is not a good. Film. I will save it. If I ever get that bored, it's it, it's interesting because it's basically the omen. Except, imagine Damien's mom recently got remarried, and and so it it it's the omen stepfather film. Okay. So it has like a big stepfather vibe of, hey there, Damien. I just want you to know that just because I married your mom, just I just want you to know that I'm also here for you, champ. <laughs> Why don't we uh go to McDonald's? Yeah. Wouldn't you like that to get a happy meal? Hey, hey, you can call me dad too. Or if you want, you can just call me Gary. <laughs> so so yeah, it was a different it was a different take on it, and like it was okay, but yeah. also really stupid and not funny, but it, it's an odd film. It's an odd film. Uh-huh. Just it, it's stole a lot. I just thought I'd bring that up because we gotten lifts things here's another interesting scene uh the scene film is a raping mother nomads are played by the band mumford and sons <laughs> originally originally the band was called mumford and the earth rapers uh-huh they changed the name for uh you know for aesthetic reasons yes and this the the later scene where Mother Earth is dismembered piece by piece actually plays on a loop at Scott Pruitt's EPA headquarters. <laughs> and Scott Pruitt just yes. points at the at the channel at points at the TV and says, "See this, Mother Earth getting dismembered. That's our goal, people." While masturbating. Yeah. Yeah. 
He's just watching that scene over and over again, just jacking it, just like, oh, man, this is so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now, Here's if we final, were, if we 100% were, percent truth. Okay, go ahead. Here's my one hundred percent. Here's my last one hundred percent true fake fact about this week's film. Begun. The film was written by E. Elias Merhingi, aka uh, Jeff Schwartz, Jay Schwizzle. Yeah. But he had a secret ghostwriter help him, and I uncovered who it is. You know who really wrote this film? Who? Ellen DeGeneres. Oh. Uh... She has a dark side. She's there on her show dancing and being all happy. That's just to mask the dark feelings inside of her. Yes. Yeah. To keep her up. dark rider at bay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So there's one last conversation that we need to have about this week's film. And yep. then I need to end it because I have to pick up Amber from freaking work. Okay. See. I did a lot of research into this film, and in my research, I found a lot of articles and reviews and think pieces. I even saw one or two YouTube videos, which was 100% dedicated to this topic. And they're all talking about the film and what the film's about, but but I, I, I almost each one of those asks the same question. Mm. Is begotten art? Well, I'm going yeah. with the answer that you gave, and it's art because yes, everything is... Here. It's, yeah, I have that here. My general theory of art. Yeah. It's it's So this is art just cuz everything is art. Yeah. This is this is my general theory of art. Yeah. Art is bullshit. Art is crap. Art means nothing. And here is why. Art is not special. Everything is art. And since everything sucks, art sucks. <laughs> art is not special or new, unique. Art is just a classification that anyone can put on anything. At any second, I can get all of my trash and dump it onto a palette and spray paint it blue and call it man's fallacy yeah. and sell it to an art installation in Brooklyn where I will be praised by my bold artistic vision. Yes. But it's not art. It's just trash. The only difference between the art and the trash is that I'm now getting my trash and calling it art. Anything is art. Everything is art. And since everything is bullshit, art is bullshit. Verbal copyright, 2007, the Pope on Film <laughs> podcast. So, is begotten art? Yes, it is art. But that doesn't magically not make it boring shit. Per drops Mike in parentheses. Yes. This movie sucks. This movie sucks. Just because you're calling it art doesn't make it good. Yeah. And the only pe the only reason that everybody is getting this like Christ analogy is because you live in a Christian country. That's how you're going to interpret it. If this movie was shown in like say China, I would bet you they would not get that imagery out of it. Yeah. This they wouldn't see it, they banned. wouldn't see it being analogous to the Jesus story or Genesis. Yeah. yeah. That's you know? why um yeah, I didn't. I didn't see. Uh, I didn't see Peter Gabriel anywhere in this film. No, no. I figured if this is going to be based on Genesis, then someone's going to shock the monkey. Yeah, I mean that's so that's shock the monkey. That's it. If you if you call it art, then you can inject any kind of bullshit theory you have onto it. Yeah, which I I, yeah. I didn't feel. I mean, maybe in a vague sense, there were some illusions to Christianity and Christ, but there were allusions to a lot of other things too. Like I said, that was, yeah. that was the story of Osiris and Isis. Yeah. In the beginning. Yeah. You know, and, and it was just a, a muddle of unclear images. Yeah. You know, that, you know, everybody is saying, again, I was not disturbed in the least by this movie. Yeah. Because everything was so hard to see. It just didn't have any kind of impact with, with me. I mean, okay, I guess God is disemboweling themselves, you know, because that's what it says in this article. Yeah. You this know? Is, this is, yeah, this is what Wikipedia says is happening in the film. Yeah. But as yeah, a director, he just he just walked up to all of his actors and said, 
jitter around a lot. Yeah. And and that was it. There was a lot of jittering around. Yeah. You know, but the without guy a was, guide, it's one it's one hundred percent unclear as to what's happening and and I don't know, it's it's just vague. Yeah. It's a vague film. Yeah, I mean he was kind of interesting looking because he didn't look like completely human. Yeah. You know? But like I shouldn't have to I shouldn't have to go on Wikipedia to learn what the plot of the film is. The film yeah, should tell me what the plot of the film is. And even in Wikipedia, the, they could sum up the plot in a paragraph. Yeah. And that's taking you through the entire plot. Like each plot yeah. point, and it still only takes a paragraph. Yeah. You know? Ridiculous. I mean, I've, I, I've seen actual outswish, out, outswish footage. That shit's disturbing. Okay? Yes. This is just... Yeah. What? This okay. is just watching someone spill chili. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's people just jittering around for no real reason. Yeah. Let's come here and jitter. Okay. Now let's go over there and jitter. You know? Yeah. And yeah. now we'll come back over here and jitter. Yeah, it's it's just it's ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, no, that was really fun. Thank you for picking that. That was great. Thank you. I'm <laughs> glad we did. It. I, I am I am glad we did it though. Yeah. I will say that. We did it. We got it out of the way. Done. Right. We didn't, I am done. We didn't I am back done with away, this. and I think our yeah. our and we're we're probably the only voice out there saying, you know what, this sucks. Yeah, you yeah, know, probably. and and not for stupid reasons like, oh, it was too gross. I couldn't take it. No, it just sucked. Yeah. So so that's all I got. That's all I got. Yeah, that's all um, I got yeah. too. Yeah. So now the very exciting part. Uh, what the hell are we doing next week? We are staying on course. Yes. Okay. With our okay. journey through the bizarre very and excited. the unusual. Very excited right now. So for next week, we are going to be doing Crispin Hellion. Glover. I, I forget his last name all of a sudden. Whatever. Glover, right? Yeah. His directorial debut in a movie called What Is It? What is it? Uh-huh. Where is this film? It's Cough Cough. Okay. Gotcha. I put a Cough Cough because I, I was surprised I even found it. I only found it in one place. It looks... Yeah, kind of okay. There is there's some junk down at the bottom of the screen, but okay, gotcha. Yes, Crispin Glover's directorial debut. Yes, can't imagine Crispin Glover directing anything except maybe a very disturbing gangbang. I, you may be close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm ex I'm going blind into this. This is exciting. He 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 stars in it as well. Oh god. Okay. All right. All right. Taking deep breaths. This should be good. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. It it will be but something. Right. Yeah, it'll be something. Sweet. Okay. Cool. All right. So that's next week then, huh? That is next week. Okay, so next week we will be watching a bloody match from Ultima Lucha Trace. Next week we will be uh, once again talking about uh, Bimbo's initiation. We'll be bringing <laughs> that up next week. Very excited about that. Uh, I've invented a fun new game called Trumping. Okay. That we're going to learn next week. And next week we are watching the film What Is It, which is Crispin Glover's directorial.
real debut. Um, this sounds pretty bizarre, but at least it's going to be better than, than Begotten, I'm assuming. It's got Crispin Glover. Right there, it's automatically better okay, than yeah, Begotten. Yeah. yeah, so that's next week. Looking back at this week, though, looking back at everything we've done here, I gotta say, um, you know, I, I think this has been pretty good. I think this has been a, a pretty good episode. I think this has been a good episode. Short, direct, to the point. This has been a pretty damn good episode. Yes. Yeah. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. I hear you screaming, Bella. Thank you. And Maxwell's not here. Maxwell fell asleep, so he can't say what he was going to say, which I believe was uh, cut and print. <laughs> do, 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 and cut and print. Oh,